My group is interested in general in the design, synthesis and measurement of uh, functional inorganic materials. One part of my group works on solid state magnetic materials, uh, trying to bridge the gap between solid state chemistry and condensed matter physics, designing materials that can serve in certain uh, applications uh, for spintronic devices or magnetic refrigerators. And the other part of my group works on molecular magnetic materials, uh, especially trying to design materials for molecular spin qubits and for spin state switching and sensing technologies. So in the long term, our research is to be able to design materials uh, with uh, desired properties. So if you say you want to create certain function in a device or a certain application, we should be able to use our knowledge of crystal structures, electronic properties of uh, uh, compounds to design the best possible materials for that application. As an example, uh, we work on one of the projects where we're trying to design magnetic materials with uh, so-called non-trivial spin textures. Uh, so the spin texture is essentially an arrangement of magnetic moments and uh, conventional magnets like iron or iron oxides that we see everywhere have magnetic moments of atoms arranged parallel or anti-parallel, so they aligned. Uh, but there are a lot of uh, novel technologies that could benefit from misalignment of magnetic moments, creating some kind of vortices or swirls where the moments are rotating and spinning in weird ways, and this could have implications in the design of uh, quantum technologies and future uh, memory storage devices. Uh, another example is we're working on uh, molecular materials where we're trying to create this uh, molecular spin qubits, and the qubit is an elementary unit of quantum technologies such as quantum sensing or quantum computing. These are upcoming very popular technologies right now. And what you're trying to learn to do as chemists is isolate qubit from perturbances. So qubits in general are very unstable towards external perturbations. We're trying to create systems which can be very stable against any kind of magnetic noise, electric noise that surround our devices. And so we're trying to learn how to use chemistry, our knowledge of crystal structure design to create such molecules. The students in my lab are trained in many different skills because it is essential for a student to be able to design material, make it, and also investigate all the properties of materials that are of relevance. And in general, students start with looking at crystal structure databases, looking at electronic properties, even using some software to calculate electronic structures, and that helps them to design the material. Then they use a lot of different uh, synthetic methods, depending on the material, to make those materials. And then we use uh, X-ray diffraction to determine the crystal structure materials. We use magnetic measurements to characterize magnetic properties. We also use uh, optical spectroscopy, infrared spectroscopy, other types of uh, spectroscopic methods to study uh, you know, materials properties and characterize them properly. Uh, and beyond that, students uh, go to national labs like Oak Ridge National Lab, Argon National Lab, also Magnet Lab here in Tallahassee to characterize materials at more advanced facilities with methods that are not available in the, in the labs, such as neutron scattering uh, or X-ray absorption spectroscopy. Uh, and again, we do this you know, both uh, in the United States and sometimes students also go to European facilities to measure some properties there. And in the end, basically, the idea is for students to be very diverse and able to approach different kind of job situations. <laughs>